Welcome to r slash pro revenge where this horrible man steals his own brother's identity in order to buy a couple of cars You steal my identity. I steal your cars I just recently found some of the revenge subs around her and spent a chunk of my weekend reading the amazing posts on r slash nuclear revenge Last night, my husband and I were visiting with our neighbor on our patio, and I told them about one of the posts on there. Our neighbor then shared one of his non-nuclear revenge stories and gave me permission to retell it here. Now, names have been changed in this story to protect the guilty. Our 40-something neighbor, Frank Smith, has a brother three years older named Fred with the two similar in looks and build. Apparently, these boys were not obedient children and got into trouble a lot. Frank mostly straightened up by the time he reached 21, but Fred kept at it with drinking, drugs, multiple DUIs, etc. While the two were still living at home with their parents in their early 20s, Frank happened to leave his wallet on the kitchen counter one night after coming home from a night out. The next morning, he discovered his ID wasn't in his wallet. Thinking he must have left it at a bar the night before, he tried locating it, but with no luck. Not thinking much about it, he just got a new ID. Fast forward a year or so, and Frank gets a phone call. It's his uncle, whose son works at the county jail. Fred had been arrested, and their cousin happened to see him when he was getting booked, under the name Frank Smith. Turns out, Fred had given the police Frank's name and ID, and was going to jail under Frank's identity. Needless to say, Frank was fuming. He went down to the jail to prove he was Frank and that Fred was a liar. Fred was ultimately sentenced to serve time and stayed put. During the time that Fred was in jail, Frank received a letter in the mail from the state BMV. It said that his two vehicles, an Audi sedan and a VW Bug, were due for e-checks. That's emission checks. Frank was confused though because he only owned a truck. He went to the BMV and discovered that these two vehicles were indeed titled in his name that's when frank realized that his brother who had lost the right to own a vehicle due to excessive duis used his identity to register these cars so the revenge frank asked how much it cost to get duplicates of the titles eight dollars each so he paid 16 bucks and walked away with title documents for the two cars he knew enough of his brother's friends to start calling around in search of the cars lo and behold he located them both at different locations now frank is a knowledgeable mechanic and could start these cars without keys but he knocked on the door of each house where the cars were he explained to each person that he owned the title of the car showing them the documents and gave them the opportunity to remove their belongings from the vehicle before he took it they understood and didn't push back taking their things out of the car and handing him the keys Frank proceeded to sell both cars and pocket around $3,000 for all his troubles. So I guess his brother Fred had maybe bought those cars using Frank's name and then had sold them on? Wow. The good news is that after a stint in jail, Fred got sober and became someone Frank could actually be friends with. Wow, a very interesting short little story there to start off today's episode of Revenge. Pretty crazy that someone's own brother would steal their identity just to buy some cars. I mean, fair play, you gotta do what you gotta do, but my word, that's a little bit tough. I don't really get it to be fair though. Like, surely you would just steal the ID of a random stranger rather than your own brother because that's gonna potentially put your brother in a tough spot if he ever finds out that his ID's been stolen by you or, you know, maybe at some point he'll get a bill for, you know, the insurance on his cars or whatever you've been spending money on. Seems weird to go to your brother before a random stranger but hey pretty weird person anyway to be fair though it's pretty clear that he was not in the best place and um the fact that your mates now pretty sick and now moving on to our next post now this one actually comes from r slash nuclear revenge uncle made fun of me for not graduating high school and called my mum a blank so i took away his business marriage kids and freedom so this story happened a few years ago back in 2016 when i was in my senior year of high school i will start with some info about the victim of this story or in better terms the butthole that got what he deserved in the end my dad has three siblings all older than him and all equally trashy human beings they bullied my dad for years and made his childhood hell after their parents divorce due to him being slightly darker in skin tone than them. Grandma is white, grandpa is brown skinned, same. They were abusive, racist Fs, and the worst of them was my older uncle. 
who became a big bully and a snob that saw himself as better than anyone else. All the bullying and the bad treatment screwed up my dad mentally, so much that he became a raging alcoholic, which made my life a living hell as a result until I moved out two years ago, causing me many traumas that I'm still dealing with till this day. In my country, the most important year in your school life is your last high school year. It ends with a nationwide exam that determines if you can even go to university or not And the success rate in this exam is fairly low Basically, if you fail, it's either you drop out and move to low-paying jobs That will never amount to anything due to our country's bad and declining economic state Or you just keep repeating till you get your degree and go to a university that you don't even want to be in But at least it's a safety net that can get you out of the country hopefully one day I really want to know what country that is That is very interesting. Things did not go well for me due to family issues and me having undiagnosed ADHD at the time that was causing me a lot of academic problems without me knowing the cause, which in turn gave me some sort of depression. It goes without saying that that year ended up in me failing. And due to the importance of that exam, people saw it as a shame and kind of a big letdown. Needless to say, due to the long introduction, my family never had a relationship with my uncles especially that they looked down on us due to my father being an alcoholic and us being dirt poor, which made them think less of us. Bear in mind, they stole all of what my dad inherited from his father, including a house and a piece of land that could have lifted us to at least a mid-class level. Lo and behold, my oldest uncle, who I last saw when I was seven, came to visit us three days after I failed my diploma. Now, I already didn't like the guy after all the stories that I heard about him, and his visit felt weird, like he had no business being around us at all, and somehow he came uninvited. My mum sat him down and started making the usual small talk, and then she called me, saying that he wanted to say hi. I went, and the conversation went as follows. Oh, look how much you've grown up. It's been a while since I've seen you. You look just like your dad. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree after all. Even in terms of being a successful person, you're following in his footsteps. Then he let out after that the most loud and sarcastic evil laugh ever. Wait, what do you mean by this? I asked him. Well, I heard you failed your high school. Guess this branch of the family is bound to be the loser side. I guess you better shut your mouth and F off. No one wants you here anyways. (laughs) I guess your blank of a mother didn't raise you well. What did I expect from hood rats like you? And after that, things devolved into a shouting match and he left. After what happened, I was mad for a while and I couldn't forget the humiliation and I decided that one day I will exact some revenge. So I started plotting. I did some digging till I discovered that all his business and assets are in his wife's name and he basically owns nothing due to him committing tax fraud and ripping off his former business associate out of a lot of money before then declaring bankruptcy, transferring the money and everything he owns to his wife to evade taxes. I came into contact with a former employee of his that agreed to testify if this stuff ever came to court due to him being a trashy human being overall and treating them like absolute trash while they work for him. Move forward a few months and trust me Reddit, I made this account just to tell this story because what happened later was basically a gift from the gods that helped this story go from pro-revenge to nuclear real quick. I couldn't even hope for a better outcome than this. He came to our house again to speak to my dad because he wanted to make a golden custom ring for his daughter's 10th birthday. My dad's a jeweler. So while he's in our house, he called out for me asking for a phone charger because his phone is dying. And at that moment, I almost jumped from glee. It's my chance to get his phone, dig around. Maybe I can find any documents or emails that can be used later in the police case that I was assembling against him. I told him I don't have a brick, but I can charge his phone with a cable from my laptop. And him not knowing any better, like the boomer he is, gave me his phone without batting an eyelid. Now his phone had a passcode, and obviously asking for it was way too suspicious. So my plan to check his email went down the drain. But still, I removed his SD card, put it into my laptop, and copied all his files. I then of course charged his phone and gave it back. He eventually left, and then boom. I locked my room and started to check all the files. Now I found nothing at all for a while. But as soon as I was about to give up, I found a well-hidden file with a few videos on it. And then I struck gold. A full-blown sex tape of him with another woman with his face fully available, clear as daylight, 
and I was literally singing to myself from excitement. So then, moving on to the revenge. A few weeks later, I made a Facebook account and made it look like his mistress's account. I then made a bunch of other accounts that looked like friends and family commenting and interacting with her. After that, I added his wife and texted her saying that I am her husband's mistress. Now, she did not believe me at first until I gave her way too much personal info that I knew about him for her to keep not believing me. I told her that he'd lied and said they were divorced and promised me marriage. Then she requested to talk to me on the phone. I got a female friend to help me out by lending me her voice and she was destroyed and I sent her the sex tape as proof. After that, she filed for divorce immediately and sued him for infidelity, which lost him custody and visitation rights for his girls. She took everything from him, even the house and all his money and assets that were of course still in her name. So overnight, he became homeless with zero pennies to his name, but that wasn't enough for me. I met up with his former business partner through that former employee who especially hated my uncle's guts and I told him everything and that the employees are willing to testify against him in court. He agreed to file a lawsuit. The cherry on top came when his ex-wife testified that he threatened her safety and her kid's safety if she didn't let him put the assets on her name by force. And she literally pulled out phone recordings that she had of him being abusive, saying that he will kill them all if she didn't let him basically use her as a tax evasion tool. And that she was so scared to use these due to her fear for her children's safety. Due to their previous divorce case, the judge needed to hear no more. That man got hit by 15 years in jail so fast that he couldn't even comprehend what happened before he was on his way to the slammer. He'll never see his family again and he'll never have his fortune back. Just to rub some more insult into the injury, I visited him a year ago and I just said one sentence. This would never have happened if you didn't call me a loser and I left. The look on his face while he pieced everything together almost cured my depression. I never told another soul about my involvement in this story, except my little sister, my female friend that helped me out, and now you read it. But I had to make him know just to be able to finally sleep at night. I mean, seriously, that's an absolutely filthy story right there. That revenge is not just disgustingly dirty. It's it's emphatic, life-changing, life-ruining. I love every part of it. See you later, brother. I mean, genuinely, like, what what has OP not done there? Like, degree or not, bro, you're going places. Like, how you... Ugh. Ugh. So good. Absolutely decimated him and everything he stands for. Absolutely love it. Like, genuinely, bordering on psychotic the amount that you've ruined his life. I love it. Clearly, to be fair, like, he's massively affected yours and you've, you've talked a lot about, you know, being depressed as a result of him and, you know, even as a result of his bullying of your father. Yeah, it's obviously caused you a lot of hardship in your life. So, look, I completely get it. Sometimes when people have bad childhoods and they fall out and, and you know, have terrible people in their lives, it can just be their one life mission to ruin their lives. And, you know fair play it worked out anyway guys that is gonna do it for this episode of r slash pro revenge really hope you enjoyed it if you want to see more stories like the first one that's pro revenge check out this video if you want more stories though like the second one nuclear revenge and even worse that's the video for you i will see you guys all tomorrow with a brand new video have a good one